Hi, welcome to seven organizational strategies to steal from a super organized teacher. My name is Katie Eckland and I'm an educator just like you. I want to share some really helpful tips and tricks to help you get organized in your classroom. So let's go dive in. Strategy number one, organize your inbox. I know this sounds super simple, but taking the time to do it now will really help set you up because I don't know about you, but for the longest time, I always said, I'll get to it. I'm too busy today. I'll get to it. And before I knew it, I had 3000 emails just sitting in my inbox and I could never find anything. So here's your steps to get organized. You're going to first start by archiving anything that is not from this school year. And when I say archive, I'm not saying delete. I'm saying archive them to a folder or to your all mail so that you don't have to have them in your inbox. So you can still find them if you need to, but chances are you probably don't need them if they're not from this school year. Step number two, now go through what's left and delete them. Maybe you have things that you subscribe to that you don't need or something that's already been done and you've completed and you don't need to hold on to, get rid of it. Step number three, create folders or labels to organize the emails in your inbox, okay? Look at what you have. Make some organization. Do you have different needs for different teams you're on or different people you work with or student emails, parent emails? Create a system through folders. Then you're going to take the items in your inbox and you're going to move and organize them into those folders. Feel free to leave the ones you're still working on in your inbox as your reminder, but start that organization because the minute you do it, it will make your life much easier so that you can find anything that you need in your inbox at any time, whether you're going into your folders or going just straight to your inbox to find what you're working on or what you maybe still have questions on. It will really help organize and make your inbox a much smoother place for you to go. Step number two, now that we've organized your inbox, let's organize your digital storage. So your digital storage is a place where you have all of your digital files and let's get that organized, okay? You wanna make sure that you can easily find things and you're not scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through pages of files. So step number one is create your folders. Start creating places to put your items. So do you have different folders for committees you're on, different classes you teach, um, and don't hesitate to kind of make this top level kind of generic, right? And then your step two is to create those subfolders within your folders, because maybe you have a folder titled writing, and then you go into that folder, and then you can break down your writing folder into subfolders of the different writing genres that you teach or the different writing classes that you teach, right? So don't hesitate to kind of start generic and then make subfolders within those folders. And now that you have all of your folders and subfolders created, go back to your kind of home for your digital storage and start moving those items into the correct folder to complete your digital organization. This will really allow you to kind of see a overall view and then click into the areas that you need to go to and be able to quickly find your digital items whenever you need them or whenever you need to share them. Strategy number three, use your calendar to create and maintain your schedule. I love using my digital calendar to book my time and to really allow me to see when I'm available, what's going on from day to day. So these are my steps. I first started by creating a work calendar for me. So this is where I would schedule any meetings I had, appointments, um, students coming in, and most importantly, time where I would work. For example, grading times, like work on grading essay number one different things like that. Because if I didn't put that into my schedule, I would never have the time during my workday to do that. And then my step number two is I created a classroom calendar or calendars, depending on how many classes I taught. And I would have one for each class. And this ca calendar would be for me and for my students and parents. I would be able to then add things to it to share with them. On my work calendar for step number three, I'm going to then go in and I'm going to add in those meetings, those work times, um, and any other specific appointments and things like that that I need to schedule for my work day. 
And then in step number four, I'm going to use my class calendars to add in report and reminders for students and parents, including classwork assignments and projects. And I always made sure that this class calendar was available to my students and parents through um, a classroom hub or a website, however you normally share that information with your uh, students and parents. So this should really allow you to be able to be organized and have a very quick glance at every day of what's going on from your calendar from day to day. Strategy number four, use a digital note keeping tool to create, track, and share lists. So first thing is you're gonna select that digital note keeping tool. And it can be as simple as creating a document where you make your list, or you can use tools like I love to use Google Keep. Google Keep is a great tool that allows me to create lists and I can collaborate with people, I can track progress and easily access that tool from my computer or um, any device like a phone as well. Once you've selected your tool, you're gonna use the tool to create and share your collaborative lists and create your list. So for me, I love to have like a to-do list for each day of the week. Cause sometimes I do specific things on Monday, specific things on Thursday. So I'll have like a list for each day of the week so I can write the to-dos out. I'll have maybe like a team um, collaborative list. So like when we have our weekly meeting, we can go to this list and look at anything that anybody's added, maybe questions, because so often we think of something, but we're not in our meeting. So if we have a digital place to kind of put that together, it's a really great place to do that collaboratively. And then I come back to my Google Keep probably almost daily to track my lists and my progress and I update those as needed, whether I'm in a meeting with my team or using my daily to-do list to make sure that I'm on track and on schedule and remembering to do all the different things that I need to do. Strategy number five, create a digital classroom hub. I love doing this because then this gives my students a first place to go before they come to me right? So the first thing you're going to do, step number one, is you're going to pick a place to create that classroom hub. I like to use Google Classroom, but I also know lots of teachers who will create a website as their digital classroom hub, um, or even just something as simple as a um, document or a presentation, just a place where you can put everything that your students might need or have questions about in terms of classroom procedures, schedule, assignments, all of that information. Once you've picked your tool, then you're gonna go ahead and create that. You wanna make sure that when you're creating, you also make sure that you've added your students or make sure that they all have access, okay? And when you're adding things to that, making sure that they have that proper access is really key. That's why I love Google Classroom because it does all the sharing for me. All right, and step number four, you're gonna create a system in your digital classroom that where your students are gonna to know to go, where do they go for assignments? Where do they go for their classwork? And where do they go for any other assignment or project information, right? Creating those different areas. For example, in Google Classroom, our front page is always our announcements and reminders. Whereas our classwork page is where our classwork assignments and rubrics and um, classroom procedures, that's all located on that classwork page. And I use topics to make different areas so students can easily find that information. And step number four is demonstrate your expectations for usage to your students regularly so that they know where to go. You'll wanna introduce this classroom hub and show them and walk them through where it, when you add new things, again, demonstrate that for them. And then if they come to you with questions and you know it's easily found in your classroom hub, refer them to go there first. And then if they have follow-up questions, they can come see you. The more you introduce this and demonstrate those expectations, the more they're going to use it and know where they need to go to get their questions answered. Strategy number six, create templates for items that you use regularly. This was a game changer for me once I started doing this. And I started very simple. I started with just my digital lesson plans. So here's what you're going to do. Step number one, create a folder in your digital storage that will allow you to kind of have your templates in one place. Okay. Then step number two, you're going to create your first template. You can create from scratch or take something you've already done and created it. What I did is I just took my regular lesson plans. I made a copy of it and then I deleted all of the weekly information I put in and was just kind of left with the shell of my lesson plans. And I made it and I just called it lesson plan template. So whenever at the beginning of every week or whenever I made my lesson plans for the next week, 
I would just go to that template, I would make a copy, and then I could just fill in the information. And I wasn't messing around with that template or the formatting, right? And it really just helps you move through that step two and three of creating your templates, and then you just make a copy. And once I started getting in the habit of this with my lesson plans, I realized there was a lot of templates I used with my students, um, whether it be um, different procedures that they do in the classroom or things like um, graphic organizers that they needed. Once I started my template folder, it just grew and grew and grew and made my life much, much easier. So start small and then it will just grow from there. And our final strategy, number seven, is use digital tools for assessments and collecting data. So first, just start by picking one. There are so many digital tools out there. I know there is a lot. But start with one. I love Google Forms. And um, the way I started by integrating more digital tools for assessments and collecting data in my classrooms, I just picked kind of one thing that we did regularly. And I took that assessment, it was already created, we were doing it on paper, and I just digitized it. I brought it into a Google form, and I created that, and then I demoed it for my students, showed them the expectations, and then I gave it to them. And then what was really great is it allowed me to have all of my data in a digital place that I could access at any time. I didn't have to worry about keeping a stack of papers or losing that papers or taking them to and from wherever I was going to grade them. And it just allowed me to keep this really nice digital record. And a lot of our digital assessment tools will even start to do things like grading them for us and allowing us to review that and make adjustments as needed. Um, but starting with a tool like Google Forms is a great place. But like I said, there are lots of many different um, assessment tools. And as you get more familiar with them, maybe you'll like Google Forms for this type and then another tool for another type. And that's okay to use different forms for different types of data collection because it does help keep your students engaged. But start with one just make it easy on yourself. And the more you get familiar with it, the more it will grow over time. I hope this was helpful. I hope you're at least going to be able to walk away with a few ideas to help with organizational strategies in your classroom. Don't forget to connect with us and join our mailing list at dforlearning.com. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.